All right, you'll find the text in Genesis chapter number 37 tonight. Genesis 37. Good to be in God's house. Yes, thank you. Good to be saved. Oh, bless you. And I would not want to be a lost man in 2012. No, sir. No, sir. So many different ways being proclamated from religious circles in 2012, but Jesus is still the only way. Yeah. <laughs> the only way. He is the way. He is the truth and He is the life. Yes. So if you're unsaved tonight, I just run to Jesus as quick as I could. Yes. And fall down at His feet because He is the only way. Yes. Genesis chapter 37. I'm going to begin to read in verse 29 and read down through the remainder of the chapter. There's 36 verses in the chapter. And you pray tonight to God blessing the message. Genesis 37. In verse number 29, the Bible says, And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed the kid of the goats and did the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat in many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he, speaking of Jacob, knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him, and Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And this is what he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Yeah. Thus his father wept for him. The Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. I have read to you a text tonight that is going to give us the account of an event that is really going to change the course of human history. Joseph here in this text has been sold by his brothers into Egyptian slavery. They do not know how they're going to go back and explain this event to their father. So they devise a plan. They're going to take that colors. They're going to kill a, a goat. They're going to take that coat and dip that coat in blood and they bring it back to their father as if Joseph has been devoured by a wild beast. When Jacob sees that coat of many colors and the blood on that coat, he identifies that coat as belonging to Joseph. And this is Jacob's conclusion. He said Joseph is without doubt written in pieces. And the Bible says Jacob looked at that death of his beloved son and said, this is what I'm going to do. Jacob said, I'm going to go all the way to my grave. Yeah. And I'm yeah. going to hold on to my hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say to you tonight that in 2012, somebody needs to tell people how to deal with hurt. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm going to say before I get too far in the message tonight, I am in no way by anything I'm going to say tonight minimizing hurt. Because if you've been alive any length of time, you know that sometimes life hurts. Yes, yes, I love my children now, my three, my three children. I love them all. I love them all equally. And if there was any way I could wrap my arms around my kids and let them live their life and die and never experience any pain or any hurt, but the sad reality is that I know that there will be times in my children's life when they will experience pain yes, sir. and hurt. Yes, sir. God bless you, preacher. I'm not trying to minimize that. No, no. Come on. I, now, I know it's easy when somebody else is hurting for you to walk in and say, well, y'all just shake it off and go on. That's easy to say when you're not the one hurting. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody ever, your kids have that bicycle red down there? Streets all over their body, and you can say they're shaking off and going. That's easy for you to say. You ain't the one having a bicycle wreck, huh? Huh? <laughs> it, it ain't easy to throw Romans eight twenty eight to somebody that's going through some kind of difficult time and just say, "Well, God's working it all out for good." But it's different when you go and feel somebody come to tell yeah. you that. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. And you're not going to go through life. I would love to be able to tell you, not you're going to live life and die and never. 
this side of the galaxy, that is just not the case. Right. 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 Now we're going to find out about two men tonight yeah. that are going to go through the same hurt, the same situation, and the same pain. Right. But they are going to handle it in two very distinct and opposite directions. Jacob said, I'm going to take this situation and I'm going to hold on to it. Yes, and by nature, that's what he did. Right. Sure did. He was a supplanter. He was a heel snatcher. He was born holding on. And all throughout his life, Jacob was somebody that got his hands on something and he would not let it go. He said, I'm going to take this pain. I'm going to take this hurt. And I'm going to go all the way to my grave with it. I'm going to hold on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, but old Joseph yeah. is going to take the same situation, the same story, and the same problem. And Joseph says, I'm not going to hold on. I'm going to let it go. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, I don't want to jump ahead, but can I say right here, while it's bubbling up in my heart, you are much better off to let it go. Yes, Much better off. So let it go. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Well, let me tell you about yourself tonight. If you've got something in your life that caused pain, caused hurt, and you have decided to hold on to that, let me tell you what you're going to find yourself doing. You're going to find yourself living constantly in the past. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, I'm not the best driver in the world. I'm not going to testify to that because I'm a preacher. You know, your preachers are. No matter where you're at, there's always somewhere else you need to be. Yep. Yep. And I, I drive, I, I don't drive by law, I drive by grace. No matter what the speed limit is, I'm going to butt it. Hallelujah. Right there. <laughs> I didn't know this about driving. You cannot drive your car while you're looking in the rearview mirror. That's because right. if you do, somewhere down the line, you will find yourself in a ditch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and if you're living with hurt, and living with pain, and you're constantly looking behind you, your life is going to constantly be off course because you can't live your life looking in the rear view. Yeah, yeah. And old Jacob said, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold on. You got your Bible there? Look at Genesis 37. Look at what the Bible says in verse 35. The Bible says in Genesis 37, 35, and all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How about that? Yeah. The Bible said all his sons and all his daughters, plural. Yeah. Yeah. I read that verse here a while back. I put a question mark right there. Because I know Jacob only had one daughter. Yeah. But the Bible says his sons and his daughters. So y'all know what I found out? That sometimes in the Bible, when it refers to sons and daughters, it does not just refer to sons and daughters, but grandsons and granddaughters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many mamas and papas we got in the building? Raise your hand. Y'all ought to be took out behind the building and shot before you leave the service. <laughs> Spoil them kids and get them all messed up and get them all crazy. We spend all our time trying to wire them and get them where we want, you know, and get them walk in line. And then you just do all this crazy stuff with them and shh, send them back home. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I was telling somebody today, I watched my mom and daddy. But my mom and daddy, when I was growing up, when I was a kid, yeah. my mom yeah. and daddy absolutely had me brainwashed and we didn't have money to do anything. Yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, you know, it's poor. I, 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 my daddy got laid off one time from Steel Family Brother Down when I was a kid, and they told me I was going to get free lunches at school. I thought I was special. I didn't know I was poor. <laughs> Some task at hand, and all it takes when them little grandbabies come out the door and say, Pop! Oh! He stops what he's doing and goes to the dollar store every time. Yep. But here's old Jacob. Yes. And all them little grandbabies are put up in his lap. The little grandsons and granddaughters gather around Pop all. And they try to make him feel better. Come on, brother. Yes, and even those grandsons and granddaughters. Could not comfort him. 
because he was holding on to her. Let me tell you what hurt will cause you to do. It will cause you to look past everything God has done for you. And the only thing you're able to see is everything you think He has not done for you. Did you know we are living in a church culture where we walk in the house of God and people absolutely believe they've got a raw deal? Yep. Yep. We drive up in our Lincolns and live in our 4,000 square foot homes and we got food on our table and people have absolutely been convinced they got a bad deal in life. I would tell you, if that's you, you can't see the forest from the trees because you don't know it. God has been good to you. Then grandsons and granddaughters cannot even cover their papa while he's holding on. He was hurt. Fast forward Genesis 42. Genesis 42. The Bible says over there, now I'm skipping ahead in time, but if you know your Bible, you know the famine has taken place. And uh, Jacob finds out there's corn over there in Egypt. And he sends his 11 sons to go there and buy his, his, his 10 sons, minus Benjamin, to go there and buy corn. They come back and they run out of corn. And, and Jacob says, boys, go back over and get more corn. And then brothers say, but, but daddy, that man over there told us not to come back unless we bring Benjamin with us. Look at Genesis 42, verse 36. And Jacob their father said unto them, me, have you bereaved of my children? Joseph is not, and Simeon is not, and you will take Benjamin away. And listen to Jacob in Genesis 42, 36. He says, And all these things are against me. Time out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to scream at Jacob right here and say, Jacob, all that's been going on is not against you. It's for you. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob, had Joseph not been sold in an Egyptian slavery and those evil brothers not have put him in that pit, you would starve to death in Canaan. Yeah. But God knew what he was yeah. doing. So he put Joseph on there to see to your side. Yes, sir. You see, some of y'all are looking at some situations in your life tonight, some problems, some difficulties. And isn't it easier to develop that attitude? All this stuff yeah. is against me. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, preacher. I pastor people that have that attitude. Yeah. They walk in the church doors with that attitude. Everybody's against me. Yeah. The world's against me. Could it be that there are going to be some things in our life that we thought were against us that are going to turn out to be for us? Yes, sir. And some things we thought were for us they're going to turn out to be against us. Amen. But the Lord, happy Lord, right there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I promise you, when they go to face God at judgment, and you're going to find out that a lot of things you thought were your blessings were your curses. Yeah. And a lot of things you thought were your curses are going to turn out to be your blessings. Yeah. 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 You see, we tend to thank God for all our material blessings. Our money. Yeah. Our stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you something about your stuff. When I was a kid, growing up, my daddy had an old four wheel drive pickup truck. And down there in Sand Valley, they had they call it, I think it's even closed down now, but they called it the Etowah County landfill. That ain't what I call it. I call it the dump. Yeah. Come on, boy. And daddy had that four wheel drive pickup about one Saturday month, and he'd load that pickup truck up with trash, and he'd say, boys, I'm going to dump. Who wants to go with me? I want to go. Yeah, yeah. Y'all know what I talked about the dump? They had everything in there. Yeah, that's true. They had cars, dishwashers, beds, bicycles, tricycles, sofas, love seats. They just had it all down there. Just in case you don't know all that stuff you love right now, it's headed for the dump. All that stuff you think is for you. Did Jesus not say it would be easier for the camel to walk through the eye of the needle yeah. than for a rich man to enter in the kingdom? Who is a rich man? Come on, preacher. We the rich man. Yeah. 
Just in case you don't know it, you are still stupid rich. Yeah, yeah. We are. And it makes it very difficult for you to ever sit out to God and love Him above everything else because you fell in love with your stuff. Preach it. Amen. 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 If, you have, if you have cash in your wallet, if you have money in the bank account, if you have change in the cup holder of your car, you are a member of the wealthiest 8% of the world's population. We ought to be running out of jumping cues, swinging from chandeliers that God has been good to us. But all this stuff we thought was for us, it's us. Jacob said, all this is against me. Got your Bible? Go to Genesis 45. Genesis 45, verse number 24. By this time, Joseph has revealed himself unto his brethren, and his brothers know something that Jacob does not know. Right. They know that the son he thought was dead for 17 years is not dead, but he's very much alive. Yes, sir. And he's not just living, he's loaded. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. he's not just loaded, he's Lord. Yeah. He's yeah. ruler over all the land of Eden. Yeah. Look at Genesis 45 and verse number 24. So he sent his brethren away. And they departed, and he said unto them, See that you fall not out of the way. And he went up out of the land of Egypt, and came in the land of Canaan, and Jacob the father, and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That boy that he thought has been dead for 17 years oh, is not dead. He's alive. Yeah. And he's governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. Yeah. yeah. How about that? Yeah. Oh. He had no problem believing that he was dead in uh -huh. Genesis 37. But when they come with him yeah. with good news that he's not dead, he's alive, he come believed on. them not. Come on, preach it. Don't know what's causing that. Yeah. Hurt. Yeah. yeah. Pain. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what pain will cause you to do. It'll cause you to believe bad news and disregard good news. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Some of y'all doing it right now. Yes, Some of y'all going to go home tonight. You're going to turn your TV on. You're going to watch CNN. You're going to watch Fox News. And you're going to buy every word they, they send out there hook, line, and sinker. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right? Some of y'all are t and Bill O'Reilly right now. I know you are. You're t and right now, and you're going to get home, and all them talking heads are going to go blah, 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 and you're going to soak all that stuff in like it's the gospel truth. Yeah. And then you got a pastor over here that's going to go home, he's going to study all week, he's going to pray all week, he's going to look in that Bible, he's going to find you a good Bible message, and he's going to get up here on Sunday morning and tell you good news from God's Word, and you're going to look at him like a woodpecker perched on the cement pole. Did you ever get that look? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Never me. That's your turn. That's funny. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. I'm all good. It's a true pain that's going to cause you to disregard right. truth. That's exactly yeah. right. It's going to cause you to turn your ears <laughs> from truth. And these brothers have come and told Jacob, that boy that you thought was dead for 17 years, he is not dead. He is very much alive. Look at the last verse of Genesis 45. And Israel said, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. Listen to him now. And I'll go see him before I die. <laughs> Hold up right there. Pup, no. Let's back it up right there. Just a minute. I do not know how y'all going to respond, but my son, if I had thought he's been dead for 17 years and somebody comes and tells me that boy of mine is not dead, he's alive, I'm going to say get the choir together. It's revival time. Get the caravan. We're going to see that boy that I thought was dead, but he's very much alive. That's yeah. yeah. Come on, man. Come so Jacob on. said, I'll go see him for you. You know what's causing that? 
hurt. According to Genesis 46, he helped us get a word from the brothers. He helped us get a word from Egypt. But God Himself says, Jacob, you're going to go down there to Egypt. And He says, I'm going to go with you. Yeah. I'm going to be with you every yeah. step of the way. You know, Joseph makes his journey down there into Egypt. The Bible says in Genesis 46, verse number 29, And Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father to Goshen, and presented himself unto him, and he fell his neck and wept on his neck a good while. And Israel said unto Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen thy face, because thou art yet alive. Hold up! Jacob, this ain't no time to die, boy. This is a time to live. Your father's alive. You know who's dead. Yes, sir. It's time to worship. Yes. Look in Genesis 48. 7, verse number 28. Well, first of all, I'm doing a little Bible exercise and I have a Some of you ain't read nothing all week. You good to read a few verses. <laughs> Genesis 47, 28. Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So the whole age of Jacob was 147 years. Did y'all know old Jacob was blessed by God to live with Jacob with Joseph for 17 years in the land of Egypt? Yes. I'll tell you what I think. Get that. Get that. I think, I think Joe, Jacob never got over it. I think for 17 years he could not enjoy the presence of his son because of hurt and because of pain. There are people in this building tonight that cannot enjoy the presence of the son right. because of hurt and because of pain. Yes, sir. You're right. For you. Not at all. Jacob said, I'm going to hold on. Yeah. Y'all got three minutes. Let me tell you about Joseph. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Jacob, Jacob said, I'm going to hold on. This is what Joseph said. Joseph said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'll be honest with you. If there is anybody in the Bible that I've read about that has a right to take their fist and shake it in the face of God and say, God, what you did to me was unjust, it was Joseph. Joseph's life is a picture of suffering. Yep. Every phase of Joseph's life, he suffered. When he was three years old, his mother died. Yep. He was left to be raised by his father, three stepmothers, eleven brothers, and one sister, none of which loved God. Right. At a very young age, Joseph didn't ask for them, he didn't pray for them, he didn't request them, but all of a sudden God giving Joseph all these dreams and these visions of grandeur that one day all of his family is going to bow down before him and because of that his brothers hated him, his daddy hated him, his sister hated him, and his three stepmamas hated him and they cast him out. Yep. Yep. They sold him into slavery. He suffered in his parents' house. He suffered in Potiphar's house. Yes he did. While he was in Potiphar's house, Potiphar's wife came to him and desired to lay with him. She found Joseph by himself. She ran in to seduce him. And Joseph ran out. But while he was running out, Potiphar's wife grabbed his coat and accused him of attempted rape. And he was found guilty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I do know that Joseph was promoted to the high place in Egypt. But let me tell you something else. Joseph died a convicted rapist. Yes, he did. There were probably some people who cheered and said, good for Joseph. But I guarantee you there was a sect in, in Egypt that said, why in the world would we let a convicted rapist serve in the position Joseph is in? He suffered. He suffered in the prison house. Over there in the prison house, God gives him the ability to interpret dreams. The baker, the butler there. And the baker and the butler have these dreams. And Joseph is given a revelation by God. The interpretation of these dreams. Yeah. He tells that butler, he said, I've got good news for you. In three days, you're going to be raised up. You're going to be restored to your buttership. But said, would you please think of me? That butler was restored to his rightful place. Can you all imagine old Joseph as he's sitting there in that prison cell? And he's watching the butler go up there and present himself before Pharaoh. And don't y'all imagine Joseph sitting there and says, Hey, today's going to be the day that I finally get, get, to, get vindicated and I finally get brought out of prison. But you know the story the butler did not remember Joseph. And for two more years he stayed in that prison cell, innocent of a crime he did not commit. Right. But y'all know what God did? Joseph went down and he went down. 
and he went down, and he went down, and in a moment, God said, <laughs> he brought him to the top. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Sounds like a mere story, man. There was another son yeah, later on in the Gospels yeah. that they beat him, and he went down, yeah. and he went down, and he went down. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Y'all have to forgive me. Sometimes I, I use my imagination. But I'm walking around over our knees at one day, and OJ Joseph is over there, and he's been promoted to the high place in Egypt. And I say, Joseph, now that you've been vindicated, what are you going to do? Y'all you know what Joseph does in Genesis 41? Joseph has a moment of temporary insanity to get married. Y'all know what Joseph was saying by taking a wife? He was saying, I'm going to start over. I'm going to start fresh. I walked around a few more years later, and I said, Joseph, how are you doing? He says, oh, preacher. He says, I'm doing good. And he has me one of them bubblegum cigars. He said, preacher, you ain't going to believe this, but me and my wife have had a baby. I said, sure enough, Joseph. I said, Joseph, what can you name that baby? He said, he said, we named that baby Manasseh. I said, Manasseh, who in the world ever heard of a baby named Manasseh? I said, Joseph, why in the world did you name your baby Manasseh? And he said, Preacher, we named that baby Manasseh. For God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> place there is to hide her is right in the church house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You come in here, you mingle in, you yeah. go in, you sing in the choir, you do all the things that everybody else is doing, and on the inside of your heart there's unforgiveness, there's bitterness, there's hatred, there's envy, there's jealousy, there's strife, there's all these things that nobody can see, and they will eat you alive from the inside out unless you can let them go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're right. I, I don't know if this is a good illustration. I, I'm just going to close with this, and I'm going to have an invitation. When I was eight years old, 
It's been 32 years ago this summer. We were over at my, my mama and papa Hallmark's house. And in their house, they have wood panel, gray wood panel. And all the family was over there for the 4th of July. I was 8 years old. And I had a little dice in my hand, a little cube dice. And I was sitting in the hall, Brother Darrell. And I was taking that dice and I was pitching it up against that paneling wall. And I was catching it. Minding my own business. Nobody watching. At one point when I took that dice and run it up against that wall, I run this hand up against that paneling. And a splinter went underneath that middle finger and went all the way to that joint. And I was the first one that knew about it. <laughs> and then everybody else knew about it. My mama, my grandmother Brooks was a nurse, a retired nurse. She took me to my mama Brooks' house. And mama Brooks took tweezers and she pulled as much as she could out this way. And they thought they got it all until a few days later my finger started swelling up. So mama took me to the doctor. And the doctor made an incision right there between those two knuckles and pulled the rest of that splinter out this way and part of it out that way. Several years ago, I was holding Kathy Beth was in the living room and I was holding her and we were rocking and she was rubbing on my hand and she spotted that little scar right there. 30 plus years old, that little scar right there. And of course she said, Daddy, what's that? So I told her the story. And this is what she said. She said, Daddy, did it hurt? Yeah. <laughs> I, said, yeah. I said, yeah, baby, it hurt. It's a I said, the star's still there. But the pain yes. is gone. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, yes, sir. God bless you, preacher. Now, now y'all reckon what it happened? I see old Daryl in Walmart next week. God He's walking down aisle seven. I'm walking down aisle seven. We meet up. He says, Hey, Brother Kevin, how you doing? I said, Brother Daryl, you ain't going to believe me. It was about 32 years ago. I was at the Momo Hallmark's house holding dice up against the wall and I run a spirit on my finger. Brother Daryl said, You've lost your mind. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I'll pass it in people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I preach to them people on a week in and week out basis that it happened 25, 35, 45 years ago, and they choose to hold on. Yes, yes. And sure, there are scars. Sure, there are bruises. But I promise you, there's the possibility of the pain being gone. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank God. Somebody said, Preacher, reckon what it is I need to let go of. Probably what you're thinking about right now. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Hey, somehow God just bubbles all that stuff at the top. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I'm thinking about it. I'm getting convicted by my own preacher right here. Bless you, Lord. Things that I need to let go of. God bless you, Preacher. You're much better off to let it go. God bless you. I want this, this evening. If there's somebody in this building that nobody knows about it but you, you never talk about it with anybody, I don't, I don't know. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. Again, I don't want to minimize her. You could take all the pain that has been experienced in life just in this small congregation and put all that pain in one person and it would kill that person that could not physically contain it. Right, man. A lot of hurt right here in this building. But this is the best place I know of to lay it down and leave it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, brother. Bob, say amen.